Hi, I'm Derek Landy. And I'm PJ Holden. And we're here to talk to you about the Skullduggery Pleasant uh, graphic novel, uh, Bad Magic. On Forbidden Planet TV. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. I have two guests this time around. None other than returning familiar guest, Derek Landy. I'm one of our favourite artists on, I say ours, I mean mine, because I'm the only person here. Um, one of my favourite artists here for the first time, PJ Holden. How are hey. you, buddy? <laughs> I'm good. Good to I'm see good. you, gents. As am I, and I'm here with my cat, as usual. Now, what, what's great, and it's, it's also, what's, your cat, what's your cat's name? Her name is Groomer. And oh, I named it that before the word groomer became a that's thing. A, that's an awkward one, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. A... I, I called her this because... Uh, it's like when, being groomed, I imagine. When, when she was a kitten, she she, she liked to perk <clears throat> on my shoulder as I was watching TV and lick my hair. Um, so, yeah. And then, unfortunately... I dread to think what your other cat's called, Derek. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably best not opening <laughs> well it's good to see you and groomer and uh and of course you... I, I don't, and pj please put and <laughs> see when you say it's good to see derek and yeah, groomer, and groomer. Oh, Adam derek and, and pj and you, because and otherwise PJ as well. <laughs> it's derek and groomer. otherwise and, I... and you pj great to see you too <laughs> and the cat groomer and Tom, groomer, cat groomer. Oh, it's gonna be awkward all the way through i think i'm not gonna mention groomer by name again and that's how we kind of move along with this yeah yeah i love it um so so you you, you gentlemen have done some uh, uh work uh that, that i've loved in recent times you know kind of on on the books front of course you've got you know skullduggery pleasant derek such an ongoing phenomenon, which we'll talk more about in a second. But but recently, in the last year or so, you've been dabbling with all of my favourites at Marvel, Cap wow. Captain America, Iron Man, and um, and Avengers. And, and PJ, uh, I haven't told you this before, but you're the artist on at least two of my favourite war books, one of which, of course, <laughs> is the, the almighty Happy Valley, which I love. And, oh, thanks uh, very much. Great piece of work, mate. Great piece of work. I'm a big fan. I own it in numerous formats as well. And uh, I, kick back to me at every stage. I hope exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying my best, brother. I'm trying my best. And and uh, yeah, and you uh, you um, did handle the art chores on one of my favorite. I used back in the day, I used to put, be responsible for the IPC Fleetway Library when I was at Time Inc. before it went to Rebellion. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the guys at Rebellion, my friends at Rebellion, have been able to do much more with it than I ever was. But of course, I, I love what's happening with battle action, and I love, mm. love. The fact that you got to illustrate Death Squad, that is fantastic. Yeah, that's Absolutely good fun. Fantastic, good mate. fun gig. Um, With the great yeah, Rob Williams on script, right? Yes, yeah, good pal of mine. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, I love doing the war stuff. I love, I mean, I, 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 I suppose you're here to talk you're, about you're, Derek's book, but I love doing it. I, and your, like style's, an your style's very much suited to that. I mean, and of course, you're, you're a fantastic 2000 AD veteran. But what we're here to talk about... Veteran. <laughs> is you, you, you like that? I, was, I thought that might go by unnoticed. It's already, fe <laughs> yeah. already feeling old, Andre. Yeah, well, I'm older than you are, mate. So I thought it was okay coming from me. You know, um, I'm just young. Yeah, that's a fact. That's <laughs> so oh, true. I just want to put that in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we're here to talk about uh, <laughs> your new um, Skull Degree Pleasant graphic novel out now from Hi Harper Collins, available from the links attached to this conversation, and that is Bad Magic. So, gents, what can you talk to me about the genesis of this project? How did it come you see about? how unsubtle I've been with the product? <laughs> I'll, I'll have it right there in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Just over my right shoulder. Um, the, 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 the genesis um, uh, of the project just came about because as, uh, you know, a lifelong uh, comic fan... Um, uh the the opportunity to um take skullduggery from the the written word and actually um into comic form was always at the back of my mind but i when i started out with the books i'd never read i'd never uh, written a comic um so and i didn't i'd written screenplays 
um, I'd written movies, but uh, and, and and writing a comic is very uh, like that. But I I didn't know how to to go about it, and so because of my work with Marvel, um, that kind of opened my eyes to okay, this is this is now an achievable goal. And all I need is for Harper Collins, the publisher, to uh, uh, get on board with the the concept, and then, and and so we started having this conversation, um, in a very kind of exploratory way, and then Heartstopper came out, and it changed the landscape, um, for graphic novels, and suddenly every major publisher wanted its own uh, graphic novel division. Uh, they hadn't a clue what the hell they were doing. Um, and so for HarperCollins in particular, they went, okay, uh, Derek now has the Marvel experience, so we would at least have some kind of guidance. Um, and so, um, yeah, finally, I, I got my, my comic book skullduggery. Well, and how did you how did you and PJ get together on the project? I as a, entirely coincident. I mean, I am quite um, I suppose would be the best word. I produce a lot of work, and I need. I'm like a beast that needs to be fed work. If I don't get work, I just I stumble around, not knowing what to do, bothering my wife. You know, just making a mess everywhere. Uh, and so uh, there are always little gaps where you go, all ah, right, I see a gap coming up. And I've posted on Twitter. I said, I've got a gap coming up. If, you know, if anyone knows anything that might what might be a project, hey, I'm available for work. And that was it. Uh, uh, that was that was the, uh, there was no big thoughts. There was no, I, oh, I know Derek Landy. I know what I'll do. It was literally just a, a, a kind of throwing a net into the ocean and hoping to catch some sort of tiddler and land in a shark. Is that... Is that <laughs> I, I'm, that makes sense. A whale. I don't know. There's no good. There's no good fish analogy for you, Derek. Not that a whale is a fish, I, but anyway. I'll take shark. Don't worry about it. I'll, 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 I'll take shark. Shark. I'm shark. okay with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and and like it. It wasn't as if um, PJ and I had a like a years long friendship. Um, I mean, I I followed him on Twitter, and we had spoken two or three times on twitter we'd never actually uh met and in fact the first time we we did meet was a few weeks ago on tour um but uh so but i i had those very brief twitter interactions um and then it just came about that we got the green light i think and my hate, my memory on this is is a little bit uh, jumbled, but we got the green light, and at twenty four hours earlier, I had seen that tweet from PJ saying, "Well, I'm, I seem to be free. Um, anyone, you know, have anything interesting?" And um, so I so. At that stage, Harper Collins were like, "Okay, so we have to talk art, Derek. We have to talk artists. Obviously, you know every artist in the world because you've worked with Marvel." And I was like, I, "I, I, I have no idea. I, I, I think I have some of their emails because you, the Marvel editors send out like group emails, um, but." Uh, I was like, dude, I, I've never even spoken. You know, I have emails. That, that's the process. You get the artists, um, uh, their layouts and then their their finished work over email and you go back with, with um, uh, it's actually saying, this is awesome. And that's the, the extent of it. Um, so, uh, but yeah, um, Harper were, okay, Derek, now, uh, uh, find us an artist. And I said, actually, amazingly, I'm going to be able to appear really professional. And so I said, okay, guys, you just hold on. I'll speak to someone. And then, uh, yeah, 
then I sent an email to PJ going, um, PJ, uh, <laughs> would you be interested in 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 this? So um, yeah, that's how it started. I, I love it, and and my wife and son had had read all this a bunch of the Skullduggery really? presents. So when I got the email, I said, "Oh, look what I've been asked to do. Should I do this?" And they went, "Yeah, yeah, you should, yeah." <laughs> so yeah. So so so, what's the concept of bad magic, and where does it fit into the overall world of Skullduggery Pleasant? Um, it fits into there are. Uh, 15 books out at the moment. Book 16 is out in March. So between books 15 and 16, there is going to be a gap uh, in universe of about as, as six years. Um, and so uh, Bad Magic takes place roughly slap bang in the middle of those six years. Um, so um, so Valkyrie is late twenties. Um, she started in the book. She started at twelve, and now she's a late twenties. It's awesome, um, and it it's as you can imagine. Um, suddenly given the opportunity to do a graphic novel of this series that I have been living with uh, for you know, close to 20 years by now, maybe 18 years. Um, as you can imagine, with these two passions uh, colliding, I go, okay, now I've got so many opportunities to do so many different type of stories. And so my original idea for it was, was a plot that was kind of intertwined with the books. And I still might use that plot because it's a good plot. And as a writer, you never throw anything away. But for the graphic novel, for the, the first Skullduggery graphic novel, we had an opportunity to potentially pull in non-Skullduggery readers. Um the Skullduggery readers will buy the thing anyway. We know that they are they are locked in. Um, so it was our mission, uh, therefore, was to appeal to non Skullduggery readers. So it isn't intertwined with the plot. It isn't intertwined with the lore. It isn't. Um, intertwined with the backstory it's a little tale with a lot of monsters set in a small irish town where something um horrible is going on and people and teenagers are being killed and it largely told from the perspective of you know a 16 year old boy um who is who who is suddenly experiencing all these horrors and then Skullduggery and Valkyrie come in and so the reader gets to meet um our heroes at the same time as the, uh, as the uh, point of view character um so you can get away with a lot of exposition and you can get away with a lot of of um explanation uh, because the reader, because I, we can genuinely introduce the reader to Skullduggery and Valkyrie and the idea of a world of magic and monsters uh, without essentially repeating ourselves. Um, so that's so it's a nasty little horror story um, in the middle of Ireland. The 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 the, the only kind. Um, P PJ, the question I've got for you, mate, is kind of got two hmm. parts to it, right? So, given the art on this book, on the one hand, you, you're uh, you, you, you're dealing with a, a long-term protagonist who's got a very defined look, yeah, and at sort of part one, I wonder what that is like. But also, the principal creature in this book, and I'll say no more about it apart from the principal creature is, and the monsters are all beautifully designed, mate. The principal creature design is absolutely phenomenal. 
and uh, and it succeeds in being like fresh and new. And I'm sure Derek, you agree, because when yes. I saw it, when I saw it on the page, I just thought, man, I haven't actually seen this before. This confluence of features, it's it's really cleverly done. So, mm. what was the challenge like dealing with an established character like Skull Duggery, who's got a very clear look, and then? What was it like having that free reign to create your own elements of the of the mythos visually? I I, I think I on the first point I think I might I might take a, a, a might take you up on the idea that it's got a, he's got a very established look. People have an established look of him in their heads. It's not a character that's been physically represented beyond book covers and yeah. some tie in merchandise, and so it's not a character that that a lot of people. Um, Everyone that sees him sees a different version of him. So it's, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, a character like, I don't know, like, um, I was going to say Judge Dredd, but we've all seen lots of different versions of Judge Dredd. There's not like a kind of a Batman character where you go, I understand that version of it. You know, I, it, it, it's like, it's, um, but having said that, I mean, Derek Six's um, description of him is quite, it's quite a simple description, you know. It's a character with a skull for a face and, and or, you know, skeleton with a hat and a nice suit is kind of it's fairly simple. Um, so the the trick really was to give that some some expression. So you you know because it's it's easy to kind of write in prose. You know he laughed or he you know he smiled or he you know shrugged his shoulders or and, and to be a skeleton to do that, that's sort of easy. To do that on the page when you're actually when you've got a skull, I've got a skull here. Look, see, there's there's only there's only so many physical because most of our facial expressions come from our muscles, you know, and there's no muscle there. So it's a, it's about kind of figuring out ways to shoot that so that you've got, you know, now he's got to be more mysterious. Well, how do you do that? Well, you cover his face and you you put a lot of it in shadow. Now he's having fun, so you kind of how do you how do you tilt the face at the angle up and so on. So it's it's a lot of that kind of thing. I wasn't, I mean, I think. Um, when we, we, we did a, a, a panel and we were talking about whether I felt intimidated, I don't think we got to round to this question, but whether I felt intimidated about drawing the character, it's kind of because of this, lots of different expectations. I, I kind of rationalize it in my head. That like you will never meet every expectation. You will, you just, it's impossible. You can't do it because for, you know, for whatever, and this book is sold. I mean, I, I don't, I, is it 6 million copies that are sold or something? It's, it's a in, huge number. In the series, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 6 million over the entire series. So of that readership, you know, every single reader has got their own idea in their own head of what that character looks like and, and how they see him, the height of them relative to Valkyrie and, the, and and what Valkyrie looks like. And Valkyrie is a harder character to get right because, you know, she's a real person with real emotion. You know, you can see those emotions on the face. So, um, there were puzzle parts to it. Uh, I mean, and one of the other features of, of Skullduggery is that he changes his face, or he can't, he, he will change his face every time. So every time you see his face, it's a different face. So how do you contain, how do you maintain uh, a kind of consistency from one face to the next so that someone reading the comic doesn't go, is this a different character now? Who is this other person? Why are they talking? So, he, and, and again, a thing that's relatively easy to do in prose, slightly harder to do visually. Uh, I on our, the first pass of it, I think we I tried. Um, I thought it was a good idea, but it was obvious that it was working for me in this one area, but was probably not going to work long term. Was to keep his face so often in shadow that you never really got a glimpse of what he actually looked like. It didn't you know? It didn't matter because his face was constantly in shadow. And you can kind of my, my art style, you can get away with something like that. It's like why has that character got really different lighting from other characters? It doesn't matter with me because it, it, I can get away with that. Whereas a lot of a more realistic artists might struggle with, you know, with the light and stuff. Um, so, you know, it was finding the right tone. And I think even, even when we got to the end of it, there were notes about, I think the, the broadness of the hat was a bit too broad. And I had to shrink things down, but they were not, you know, they weren't overly complicated. So I don't, I mean, I didn't in any way kind of feel like, Oh, I'm really intimidated by this. This is going to be hard. I, I kind of was aware that people will have different views of it. So, I, I, as long as I made Derek happy and, and the editorial team happy, they were my targets. You know, that's as long as I made that character live and breathe on the page for those guys, then I will be happy. And and the rest of it was sort of, you know, we'll see. And I've forgotten the second part of your question because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'll tell you what the second part was. It was about. The monsters in the book and primarily... Oh, yeah, the monster design. Uh, yeah, the main, the main yeah. character. Yeah. I, I, Derek, you'd sent me some images, I think, about, 
I think we described him, you described him as a court jester looking character. Yeah. And, and so. but in a business suit, sort of court jester business suit. Okay. And so, um, and I think there was something about the smile as well, being kind of deeply unsettling. And um, later on, that creature um, inhabits other people. And, and it was, how do we, and I think you said to me, I don't know how we're going to do this. Visually, I don't know how we're going to make it look like still that monster and also still that person. I was like, well, that'd be dead easy. <laughs> don't worry about that. It's just a smile. As long as I can get that weird face with the weird tombstone like teeth in it then it'll be fine and overly big like a bigger smile for the face than you could possibly get in there um so yeah so that was a kind of fun i mean i, I would have happily designed new monsters all day long but I, most of the monsters had little notes little simple descriptions of them that kind of made me think well there, there's a history to this monster and i want to know what it is but we don't we don't really you know they're they're we don't get into that too much so if people want to kind of speculate, they're more than welcome to, but it was fun to do. I mean, it was, I love designing monsters. There's nothing, you know, you're always kind of thinking, is this one different enough from the last one? Is it, is it too similar? Is it, you know, so it, it, it's good. I mean, that's good fun to do that sort of stuff. So, and, and my favorite, I think one of my favorite pages is when they all appear on the yeah. page, there's a page with a wall in, in the woods and it's like, oh, this is good when they're chasing a little kid. And it's like, <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> Thing More is the, monsters. The monsters in this book are, are are great, and I think you've totally totally delivered on that. And, yeah, and... I was I was a little worried. I think there's a great expression: putting a hat on a hat. And I was worried that maybe our main bad guy, I had put a hat on a hat because it's it's quite an ornate character. There's elements of Timothy um, Timothy Graypole. Is that the, name, the character's name from Clay, Claypole? Timothy, Timothy Claypole. Clay, from... Timothy Claypole. From Rent a Ghost. Timothy Claypool from oh, Rent a Ghost. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> There's a deep dive for anyone in there. Yeah. <laughs> and I also, that, that's definitely uh, a people of a certain age reference for yeah, sure. Yeah. And also, <laughs> if I said also that to the, my adult kids, they'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and also um, elements of, of uh, it, uh, Stephen King's it in the, in, in the wow. character design yeah. and stuff. And and also as a as an unsettling looking character compared to other people i quite like the way he just sort of turns up on the page and he looks like he's in the room but no one spots even though he's so outlandish and different no one can people just he's not there as far as they're concerned that's kind of an interesting fun thing to do so yeah no i mean it was good fun doing that i think we yielded monster design fairly quickly though i don't yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know if you felt it was going to be a long time to get it right but it felt to me like it it came together fairly quickly um yeah yeah, yeah. No, it was um it was that smile that was that I I think that informed everything else. Um because I mean I you could have gone really conservative with the outfit with the the rest of the features. You could have gone outlandish with the outfit and the rest of the features, but it's the mouth, it was that that giant bloody mouth uh that you'd in either iteration you'd always be focused on the unsettling smile so uh, mm. yeah yeah and, and guys what was your what was your process for creating the book how, how did you put it together was it a full script that pj interpreted did he go back and forth on it how, how did you how, how did he get it was it, it it was it was it was full script um uh if if i had um been a tiny bit more prepared it would have uh we would have given pj the entire script and so he'd have been able to 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 um or at least i would have been able to as i'm writing the the final chapter go oh okay this might be an interesting element to put into the first chapter as it turned out um i was doing that anyway and then asking pj to just make tiny alterations which i think we can all agree for an artist is no problem oh uh, yeah <laughs> as long as you have you know you for any any you know budding comic creators out there artists really like after they've locked a page for you to come back with tiny little notes i they love notes love i love they them i love them yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it was it was full script, and then you'll uh, not you'll not know this, Andrew, but there there was a point where they went, 
do you know we need an extra page in every chapter? <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> so we we needed the extra page because we'd realized that um okay, we need the page turn to be, you know, uh on a certain page. And with we we hadn't taken into account the that we would have um every uh, chapter break would be a page and so everything was sh shifted forward and so that ruined the the page turn because you want to turn the page and see the big image you, on the right on the yeah. left wow. page you don't want it on the right page because that'll be spoiled so um when i realized this i sent a very panicked email to Harper saying, okay, um, freeze, everyone freeze, 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 stop, stop, stop. Um, what are we going to do? We, we, um, uh, and, and they said, uh, oh God, um, I mean, we could, we could possibly put in an extra page in each ch chapter to shift it back on track. And I said, again, PJ won't mind that. <laughs> It was fine. I mean, as, as it happens, <laughs> the pages that were sort of insert. I mean, I think we'd about halfway through or something. At yeah. that point, I'd already drawn about 60 pages, something. Um, and the pages that were inserts were, generally, they were taking a little moment and expanding it and giving it a bit of room to breathe. And they were, you know, let's let's give this moment um, something more than, than a perfunctory, because you, you're sort of trying to do things at a pace and there's big moments and you don't have time to show them off. So you, you get on with the rest of the meat of the of the plot. And it was like, well, we can actually take a moment now and just see this in one big panel. So yeah. they, I wouldn't call them splash pages, but they were generally, they would typically have a splash panel and, and would be a nice little showy off bit. So that, that was kind of, so it was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't, it wasn't a com convoluted. I didn't have to change anything before or after. It would be literally, let's add an extra, let's where you have page 16, we're going to put a new page 16 and we'll shuffle everything, just move it back. And, you know, page 16 becomes 17 and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. And and you, I didn't have to change anything around it. So it wasn't like it suddenly, oh, by the way, we're introducing a new character. So you need to put him in every single panel. You know, it was like, oh, no, this moment where she activates her suit, let's give that a bit of yes. a bit more humph. And and so it wasn't, it wasn't too bad at all. I mean, I think the, the thing is, Harper Collins have never done a graphic novel before that I'm aware. Um, mm. So for them, this was all brand new stuff. You know, this was all, and and they were going with a graphic novel um, rather than comics. You know, in traditional twenty-two page comics or twenty page comics, they were going, let's do a full-on graphic novel. So I think for them, there was a lot of kind of they were unsure of the shape of it, un unsure of what the shape of it would be, um, and how they would get to that shape. You know, uh, so but it was, I mean, aside from that, it was fine. <laughs> That is that is very interesting, and thanks for your thanks for your candor about that process. You know, as if you're hardcore comics. Oh, we're fans. telling everyone. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's, it's, it's part of our shtick now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Um, guys, what are you hoping for in terms of what response have you had this far? And, uh, this far, and what are you hoping for in terms of this graphic novel? Um, the response has been really good. Um, I mean, you know, uh, I. I went on tour and, uh, um, you know, so you're talking about, you know, four hour signings being the, the average. Um, uh, so the, the response has been really, really good. Uh, the, um, the skullduggery readers have, have grabbed it and, um, and embraced it. I haven't a clue about anything else. I'm always so paranoid, and it, it's I don't ask how much a book has sold ever. I sometimes I'm told, but I never ask how much a book has sold because if I have a number in my head, and it's less or uh, than the number that I I realize, oh, that's what I was hoping for, then I'm gonna be disappointed and i don't follow any sports team i don't <laughs> like ireland um uh we played new zealand in rugby and it was a big deal and i saw it and the game started and i said nope i'm not gonna watch it because i don't do disappointment 
And so I don't follow a team. I don't have a favorite fighter. I um uh I don't play the lottery. I do not do disappointment. And so I refuse to put myself in a position where uh any piece of news could put me in a bad mood. Um which uh uh yeah, so I haven't a clue how we're doing. But um yeah, I as far as I know. Uh, the readers seem to um, have embraced it, which is absolutely lovely. My my observation is that they have indeed embraced it. And my view personally, having read it, is that it's a great piece of work and I love your creative chemistry. And I think for anybody who wants to dabble in the world of Skull Degree Pleasant, this is in a way, in a way, as you alluded to before, kind of a perfect jumping on point because it gives you a really solid flavour of the character while also being its own thing that you can enjoy from beginning to middle and end with this great chemistry between the two of you and some fantastic artwork from PJ to match your, you know, to match your words on the page. Absolutely. Character designs are phenomenal. They're brilliant. So well, so well played gents. And (laughs) thanks for coming on to talk to me about it. Everybody who's watching this once again, you'll, you'll find this book right here in, in PJ's hands to order at the links below our conversation. Brilliant. It's so it is so pretty. And th- pretty thanks so much for joining me, gents. Derek, Thank it's always a pleasure much. to have you on. It's Indeed. great to Thank chat you. with you, PJ. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time. And I will look forward to seeing you both again soon. Cool. You take care of yourselves. Thank Bye. you. Here Bye. You. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.